Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at input again, but we're going to be looking at a specific function called get keyboard state, which is really handy to use. And if you followed the previous episode on handling input, this is going to be another complementary operation. And it's going to especially be useful for things like game programming, where you want to handle different keys that might have been pressed at a different time and so on. So anyways, let's just go ahead and dive into it and see what this get keyboard state function is. Now in the previous video, we basically learned about the event event loop, which is for, well, handling events. And then we learned about sort of querying the different event types that happen, and then if keys were pressed and so on. And I sort of mentioned that, well, if you want to see if two keys were pressed, or if I hit shift and the letter uh, L or something, I might need to get those key codes. How, how would I handle that? Well, it turns out there's a really handy function here called, uh, if I go in the complete API index and I search for git keyboard state here, uh, and you can see there's a bunch of interesting keyboard functions, but get keyboard state is the one I want here. And this basically gets a snapshot of the current state of the keyboard. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you how to use this. Um, and basically what I want to do here is first and foremost, I want to uh, get the pointer to the array of key states. Okay, uh, and I only, I, I can do this basically wherever I want. Um, so the pointer return is a pointer to the internal SDL array, right? SDL is already managing this for us uh, somewhere, okay? Uh, it'll be valid, this pointer that I get back for the whole duration of the program, right? So this is something that I could just do here. Uh, and again, it looks like this is a uh, array of bools. So let's just do uh, keys or something like that. Uh, and the the pointer itself uh, is... is um, what I should say uh, will not change here. So git keyboard, oops, let me make sure I do this right, keyboard state. Uh, and then for the parameter here, if it's non-null, I receive the length of the returned array here. So uh, I'm using C++ here. I'm just going to use null pointer here. But basically the goal of this function here is just to return uh, a pointer to some internally managed array here in SDL that always tells me if some key is being pressed up or down. Okay. All right. And it's just going to give me a true or a false value here. All right. So let's just go ahead and compile this much here. Uh, let's see here what I did here. Uh, oops. It says invalid conversion from const bool to bool star. Okay. Let's be very specific here. Const bool. Right. I can't change that pointer. There we go here. So you make that mistake. Good job, C++, being a little bit strict here. <laughs> um, okay, now, how do we actually use this, though? Uh, well, we need to use this with uh, the scan code values here, right? I want to check if some key was pressed up or down here. Okay, so let me scroll down here a little bit here. Uh, and let's go ahead oops, uh, and see here if uh, I call this keys. Uh, and well, this is an array here, right? I mean, this is a pointer here. It's, it's giving us a, a, you know, a managed array here somewhere. So I basically want to check some key and some index here, uh, like this and just say, if keys, you know, equals true, right? Cause it's a true or false value, true or false value. Say, uh, one, one, one key was pressed. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and just compile that. It compiles. Let's run it here. Uh, and I might have to hunt a little bit for what key 111 is here. So A, B, C. I've still got this in my event loop. D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O. Uh, oh, let's see here. I press O. That should be key 111. Uh, but it's not printing out here. Hmm. Okay, what have I done here? Okay, that was a pretty good guess, but you know we should probably just quit this and, and see what's going on here. So, uh, not quite uh, what I want here. So let's look at this thing, SDL scan codes here, and SDL scan code representation here has all of our keys listed. Okay, so I didn't have to guess uh, for what was that the letter L. Well, we'll just pick one here. So scan code L here. Okay, that's 15. Okay, for whatever reason. Uh, let's see if that was. Uh, more true here. Let's see, scan code L, uh, and we'll just put was pressed here. Okay, so let's go ahead and recompile, rerun. I'm gonna go ahead and press L. Oh, okay, it was pressed a bunch of times because, well, my program's running very fast. If I press A, just gives me something else, but as soon as I press uh, L here, uh, again, we can see we have detected that this key is pressed here, which is very, very nice here. Okay, so now I can use these scan codes here 
uh, to detect. And they're pretty trivial SDL underscore scan code. And whatever key you want, you have things like comma, period, slash, most of the uh, keys that you would want here, including, you know, even if you're going to various uh, different non, I mean, I'm typing in English uh, characters here. Uh, but it should have most of the stuff on most keyboards here, OK? Um, OK, so that's um, a little bit on that for handling scan codes. It's as simple as that. Now, a few notes here uh, about this. Now, again, as mentioned, I don't need to update the pointer. Where the keyboard state uh, gets updated, uh, well, it says use SDL pump events to update the state array here. Okay, So I could call this explicitly here, uh, I believe. Uh, and if you go back to one of my earlier lessons here where I said, hey, it's important to know what's going on in the source here. Let's see if this pump events, where, where exactly that is called here. Okay, that's the thing I want to grep for. And I'm going to go into the SDL source here. And let's just grep for SDL pump events. And if my memory serves correct here, so I want to lurk in events. SDL events here. This is a little bit, you know, advanced stuff here, but again, it's a good use case of uh, what's sort of important here. Okay, SDL pump events is called in maybe flush events, uh, pump events internal, pump events. Okay, uh, let's see if it gets called in SDL poll event. Uh, that's basically what I look for. And in that calls, let's see, SDL poll event calls SDL event wait timeout. Okay, let's find that actual function. Here it is. Okay, does it call? Ah, it does call SDL pump events internal, which is basically what pump events does. Okay, so that was just a longer way of me, you know, one showing you what's going on in the source code, but saying, I, you know, th this is getting updated. This keys are right after I do this. Okay, so check for. You know, to get the latest state of your keyboard, you need to call this function or explicitly, you know, call this pump events thing here. Okay, that, that's all I'm saying here. So, um, again, for a game or something where you want precise keyboard inputs, make sure, you know, the order matters for this stuff as far as when this gets updated. So, keys here, or sometimes I call this uh, key state, might even be a better name uh, for this key state. Um, you can find out true or false if some key is being pressed. And then this is where I can do like combinations of things here, where I can do like and key state, SDL, scan code, uh, you know, the shift key or something is also, let's do, let's do L and K. I don't know if that has some meaning here. Uh, okay, so here's our window. Uh, I'm gonna press L, press K individually, but if I hold them down both, uh, I will get my message here. Well, scan code L and K, I can update the message here. But anyways, that's how you can handle more interesting keyboard uh, combinations, so to speak here. And again, you can investigate these uh, scan codes uh, as well. Um, some other notes here, let's see here. Uh, I guess you can reset your keyboard as well. And again, this might be important, um, like when you're restarting uh, like a game or something and you don't wanna make, you know, there could be like, let's say the character uh, loses the game and then you're still holding down some keys, you might want to like clear the state before a new match starts. So again, there's like little touches that might be worth uh, knowing about here. Again, as mentioned, always look at the C also so you can see the other functions here. Uh, but that's it, get keyboard state. And that's usually what I recommend uh, my students to use here instead of all of these event types. Now I can nest these things too. I can say, hey, only look to see if a key is down if you know, some other, you know, key has just been released or something. So we got to know about both. But again, it's handy to know um, that this uh, exists here and, and how exactly it works. So anyways, folks, there you go. This should complement the previous lesson here on otherwise the event loop. Now you can grab keys again, as always, courses.mshot.io. Uh, if you want to follow along in the same playlist that you're following along with uh, on YouTube, or maybe you're already on course.mshot.io and you don't care. Um, anyways, uh, uh, anyways, thanks again for your time and attention, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next episode.